So we're going to take a detour now and we are going to derive the infamous material derivative. We're going to do a um, preliminary intuitive derivation um, with a simple example um, so that you can uh, get an idea of what we mean by the material derivative. And then we'll um, do another derivation just um, straight from the Reynolds transport theorem. So let's assume that there is a um, factory. Um, so let's say there's just like this big factory um, uh, over here and it's got some you know, ch chimneys spitting out um, smoke into the atmosphere and it happens that this factory is close to a river and um, there's flow in this river <coughs> and assume that um, we know that this factory is dumping some sort of pollutant or some some liquid into the river um, so you know initially it's coming in with this kind of sort of concentration and then you're gonna have the um, pollutant disperse um, throughout here you're gonna have a very large concentration over here and then smaller and smaller concentrations as you go along so there is a gradient um, um, essentially DC by dx we're going to assume things in 1d right now um, before we do it in uh, before we extend it to 3d okay so now let us consider a, a person um, let's say you want to measure the concentration at a point what you would do you would you know send one of your grad students they would come here and then they would just kind of throw in a little little um, um, tool that measures concentration and we're going to assume that the concentration doesn't change in time there's only um, change in space um, for this situation so um, what the person is going to measure over here is over time with respect to time if you look at concentration they're just going to measure a constant concentration at that point okay there is a concentration gradient um, so if they do a measurement at another point they are going to get a, um, a lower curve now Let's say um, you send in another um, uh, graduate student who is going to take a boat. Let's say the grad student is into boating and they're going to take a boat. So they're going to be on this kind of little canoe over here. There's a grad student and they're going to throw in a little um, same um, probe to measure concentration. Now, as, the, as they approach um, um, as they go through the river, they're following the same velocity um, of the river. As they approach um, the region of the concentration, um, they're going to start measuring concentration. But over here, they're not going to measure anything. So initially, this is what this is going to look like. Okay. Over time, from the perspective of the um, student on the boat, initially, they're not going to measure anything until they hit, let's say, this point A over here, and then, bam, they're gonna get a spike in concentration, okay? And then they're gonna go down like this because there is a concentration gradient, okay? There is a concentration gradient in space. But from the perspective of the boat, they're measuring this um, with respect to time. Now, we wanna make sure that as they approach this point, we're gonna call this point B, um, let's say um, th this is point B over here. Well, that concentration needs to be identical to the one measured by um, the person in the Eulerian frame. Okay, so now the question is obviously from the perspective of the person on the boat, there is a change in concentration over time. So there is a dc by dt. And the question is, what is that equal to? Um, in terms of the spatial distribution of concentration and how can we reconciliate the value of dc by dt by the value with the value measured by um, the person um, uh, uh, doing the eulerian perspective so what we're going to do we're going to zoom in a little bit um, over over this region where there is a co concentration okay so we're going to assume that um, there's this is kind of the gradient of concentration uh, over here a portion in the river there is um, c0 over here and c1 over there and these are spaced by a distance 
uh, delta x there's higher concentration over here t0 is greater than c1 so there's higher concentration over here so the gradient is like this dc by dx okay now what is dc by dt okay from the perspective of the person on the boat you know they're going to be here they're going to come they're going to hit c0 and then they're going to hit c1 from so from their perspective dc by dt is the limit as delta t approaches zero c1 minus c0 over delta t now because this is an infinitesimal distance um, we can say that c1 is approximately equal to c0 plus um, dc by dx times delta x whatever that gradient is okay so we're going to substitute this here we get a limit delta t approaches zero of c0 plus dc by dx delta x minus c0 over delta t so c0 and c0 they cancel out so we get um, this equal to delta to the limit as delta t approaches zero of delta x over delta t times dc by dx now this person on the boat um, is traveling at the same speed of the fluid flow okay you so in a dist in a in a time interval delta t they're going to travel a distance delta x so that delta x over delta t is equal to the velocity or in other words the distance that they are traveling delta x is equal to u delta t so that means that we just get rid of the limit we don't need it anymore this is equal to u dc by dx that's equal to dc by et and there you go this is the relation between what the person in the um, lagrangian frame is measuring compared to the actual distribution and um, um, uh, concentra of the concentration gradient okay so now um, you can see how when we do this in 3d um, it's easily to extend this to 3d that this actually turns into a gradient of the concentration and this actually turns into the velocity vector field okay so this becomes in 3d dc by dt equal u dot grad c and you can do the same thing in all three directions and you're going to get three different components you're going to get u dc by dx plus v dc by dy plus w dc by dz so you get this um, kind of version on 3d now we haven't said anything about um, the change um, in time so now we're going to assume that we're going to go back to the same river and um, we're going to assume that also not only the concentration is changing in space but that it is also changing in time so now there's going to be a gradient in space from um, c0 to c1 and there's also going to be a gradient um, in time because c0 and c1 are changing in time so we're going to take the same region of space we're going to assign this point c0 and this point we're going to say c1 but also assume that um, not only there's there's a gradient so c0 is higher than c1 but there's also um, um, a change in time so, so c0 and c1 are both changing in time so the way we're going to write this is as follows we're going to do dc by dt is equal to the limit as delta t approaches zero of c1 at t plus delta t minus c0 at t over delta t now the idea here is that the person on the boat they arrived at time t they arrived at position c0 okay so that's our c0 and then in an increment delta t they arrived at position c1 they're going to measure something different at c1 okay so that's why we're ident we have two different um, subscripts over here c1 and c0 uh, there if they were at the same position it would be c0 t plus delta t minus c0 at t but that's not the case because they're moving with the fluid velocity okay um, so now we have to think about what is c1 at t plus delta t it is actually equal to c1 at t so at time t once the observer arrived at c0 c1 had a concentration called c1 at t 
But then as once they approach C1, that concentration changed by how much? It changed by um, dC or del C by del T times delta T. That's by how much they, it changed, okay? That's the first order, all right? Now, okay, so once we substitute this, we get a limit of delta T approaches zero of C1 of T plus dC by dT delta T minus C0 of T over delta T. Okay, so now we kind of incorporated the change in time. Now we still need to incorporate um, the change in space, which is at a given time T, the difference between C1 and C0 was given by what we calculated early on, but we can just show it here for illustration. Um, so we are gonna write C1 at T is equal to C0 at T, so that's at the same time, the only change is going to be spatial, um, uh, plus dc by dx delta x. Okay, so that's um, delta x over here. Once we plug things in, we get dc by dt equals to the limit as delta t approaches 0 of c0 at t plus dc by dx delta x plus partial c by partial t. I guess I should put partial over here because c is a function of x and time, space and time, delta t minus c0 of t over delta t. So now c0 and c0, they cancel out. And again, delta x, <coughs> pardon me, delta x over delta t is the velocity, delta t and delta t cancels out. And in the end, we get dc by dt is equal to d partial c by partial t, that's the local change measured at a fixed point in space, plus the spatial change measured at a fixed point in time. Okay, um, partial c by partial x. And that is the material derivative. Now in 3D, this becomes, you know, you're going to see the symbol capital C also written. Um, dc by dt is partial c by partial t plus u dot grad c. Okay. And in general, what we say is the material derivative of a given property phi is equal to d phi by dt, partial phi, partial t plus u dot grad phi. Okay. The idea here is that we are tracking an infinitesimal fluid um, particle or infinitesimal material point as it goes and flows with the flow velocity. Um, this U here is the flow velocity, and we're assuming that, that well, the fluid particle is going to go with the flow velocity. Okay. Now, this is very helpful, um, you know, for applications like you're sending a balloon in the atmosphere or you have a pressure sensor or some um, probe that is moving um, um, with, a, with a fluid and measuring things. Um, and we can derive the same thing for um, a probe that's moving at a different velocity. So you just take um, relative velocities. But this is the, the basic idea of the material uh, derivative.